Hi everybody, this is Harmony with Harmony Stitches and welcome to another episode of my crafting adventures. Here I talk about cross stitch mostly and then knitting and crochet sometimes. Um, like I said in other videos though, it's kind of weird because crochet used to be my go-to thing and now it's kind of taken a back burner. Um, but to everyone that has subscribed, um, liked and commented on my videos, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to watch and to comment and show me a little bit of love. Um, because it is kind of, you know, when you put yourself out there, you never know what you're going to get. So I do appreciate some great feedback that way. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, one of the, the first thing I'm going to show you is a, um, a item ready for display. I actually finished it a couple weeks ago after I filmed my video and I totally forgot to bring it back the last two weeks. So I'm going to show that since I remember this time. This is Beehives Matter by the Nebby Needle and I did this finish. So at the Dollar General I got this little wooden piece that had this hanging sign and it's gray with yellow kind of golden color and I thought it would just be perfect. So I know that my finishing isn't perfect. I kind of got a little off, off square here on the corners. I don't really know what happened, but I am not a professional, and so I'm going to call it good. But it was kind of the perfect size. I didn't feel that I needed to put any backing fabric on it because the design on the, the board showed through, so I thought that was good. And the colors kind of match the beehives, the skeps, or whatever they're called. So that was my ready for display. And that's why I um, forgot to show it to you because I had set it up with some of the Ray Dunn B items that I found at the store. So I just kept passing by and forgetting to grab it. And this is another thing that I wanted to show you. I picked this up a couple weeks ago. Um, I had my eye on these um, little basket things. There's two, a smaller one and a bigger one. I had my eye on them, but even, they were on clearance for $17.99. And I told my husband, I said, oh, I don't know if I want to get those for $7.99. Um, or $17.99. Sorry, $17.99. Um, but then I walked by one day and saw this sticker. $6.25. I said, sold. Sign me up. <laughs> now, the only issue was... I used some of the spending money that I was saving to do the Father's Day gift. However, it worked out. It's fine. It worked out. So, so I, I, I couldn't not do it. And then the on the um, receipt, it said that they were originally $24.99. And I'm going to... Okay, are they worth $24.99? Maybe. Do I have that money? No. You guys know I'm on a budget. I try to stick to it. I have plans. <laughs> So $6.25 fit much better into my budget. So, okay, we'll get on to knitting. I have um, a whole bunch of dish, dishcloths sitting here. Um, I was finishing up Leslie's order last week, and I told you I had like one or two left to go, and I got another order. Well, I went on Tuesday and bought the yarn for her order, and then she sent me a message after that and said that her coworker wanted a set, so I went and bought more yarn. So... Here's Leslie's stack, two yellow, two blue, one white, and then I did color blocking of the blue, white, and yellow, and white. I My plan is to weave in all of these lovely ends tonight so that way I can take them to her this week and she can take delivery of any day that she's at work. So that'll, that's that. Um, and I used the Premier Home, ooh, got some glare there, Premier Home Cotton, that's what I used in all of these, except for the white was a Mary Maxim cotton. The blue is called Cornflower. I do not have the label for the yellow, so I apologize. I don't know what that one is for. For the next order, she wanted bright blue, yellow, and purple. And this is the color combination that I found in the Premier Home that was at my store. So the Cornflower, the yellow, and this really pretty purple. It's coming up a lot brighter, I think, that on the camera than it is. It's kind of a dusty, like muted. But I thought that these three colors went well together. So I made just a basic, simple garter stitch. It's 38 stitches. <clears throat> I got the stitch count and row count from 
uh, Yarnspirations. They have a color blocked one using Bernat Handicrafter, I think. Don't quote me. I will link it below. You'll see it. Um, I didn't want to necessarily do color blocking on these ones because I'm doing all three colors. If there's any leftover, then I will do color blocking and then put them in my inventory um, for later. But that I got the basic the basic formula from that that free pattern for for this. And then uh, it's called the garter slip dishcloth, I believe, from Wildflower Wool, which I said that I would link last week and I totally forgot, so I'm going to link it this week. And that's what this one looks like, minus the my end that needs to be woven in. So it's it's all knit stitches, but the way that you do it, it gives it this really great texture, which I thought was going to be really good for dishcloths. And it came from Wildflower Wool, who loves dishcloths. She made over 52 of them last year, so I'm guessing uh, if she liked it, her name is Louise, if she likes it, I'm going to do it. Plus, this pattern was super, super easy to memorize. There's um, garter stitches uh, or um, knit stitches in two rows, and there's two pattern rows, and they're really easy to um, to memorize. Then you do two knit rows and then a slight variation on the other pattern rows, which it's basically the same thing. So it's easy to memorize, so you can just go, go, go. And I did seven and a half. You have to end on the second knit, so you can do that twice in a... a at the beginning of a repeat or in the middle of the repeat. So I did it seven and a half times because I wanted them square. So I took the measurement here and then found how tall I had to make it. So I got a blue one and I got a yellow one done. So three more for this order. A fancy one is what I'm calling it and two plain ones. Um, she'll get a fancy one and a plain in each color. And I thought that was a good combination just depending on, you know, what she liked. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the next order wanted cream, beige, or brown, or a combination of the colors. And when I went to the store, I found this. And of course, it's going to be hard to see on the screen because of the light coming in. I should probably shut that shade. Maybe that would work better. Um, and this is, again, Premier Home. And this is Sahara Splash. So this is the same as like the Tangerine Splash and that turquoise one that I used for the Knit-a-thon um, dishcloths, but it's it's browns and it worked up really nicely So this is she wants two square two round and two diamond So Leslie's were diamond the second order is all square and this one is three of, or two of each so I made a square and hers are all going to be garter stitch so I made the garter stitch I'm on to a second garter stitch square. And then I made a round one. Woo, my long tail. I wanted to leave a long tail because you have to sew this up. So it doesn't look round at the moment, but you do these little wedges using short rows. You do eight wedges and then you sew it up and cinch it in the middle, which I know it doesn't look like anything right now. Um, but I will definitely, um, I will not be done with all of these by my next video, so I will have this one sewn up so that way I could show you, because you'll want to see. And then, remember last week when I talked about, oh, I don't have, oh, here they are. These crazy knitting needles where one was thicker than the other. Well, I wanted to see, because these say they're size eight, US size eight, five millimeter. So I got out my knitting gauge and I put one through and I put the other one through. The thinner one is a size 10, a US size 10. The thicker one is a US size 10 and a half. No wonder why my dishcloths felt kind of loosey-goosey. So they'll st they're still gonna work, they're still great dishcloths, but I do love the fabric that I'm getting using the size US size six. They're four sizes smaller than, this, than the thinner one here. So um, I really like the fabric that I'm getting with these metal, um, size six, so I'm going to continue using those. These ones I think are just duds. I don't really know what I'm going to do with these. I probably should write the company and let them know like I got a dud pair, not that I necessarily need them to send me another one, but just so that way they know that there's something wrong in the process or at least for one set there was a problem. So I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so now we're on to cross stitching. That was all the knitting for this week. I've been knitting my little fingers to the bone trying to get them done. I told her two weeks for hers but then she added on her friends but still I'm getting like one done a day 
I got half of a dishcloth done today on the way to church. My husband and I did go to church today. On the way to church, we had to run to a friend's house and then back home, I got half a dishcloth done. So I figure if I can get one done a day, then that's pretty dang good. Okay, on to cross stitch. This is the Alice in Wonderland Sal Stitch Along from Owl, Owl Force Embroidery. And if you remember, if you watched my video from last week, it's okay if you didn't, um, I had to start over. So one weekend, each part, it's 19 parts. Each part is two weeks. And then they release the next part. Two weeks later, release the next part. So on until I think the end of January. Um, halfway through part one, I needed to start over because I was not liking the linen and I coffee tea dyed my Ada and I got started again and this is how far I got. <clears throat> so I did get the trellis or arbor done, whatever you want to call it. I did get the green done on this side and then it's the same motif over here. So I started working on that this morning and then there's of course hearts and flower buds um there's two hearts here in the center or maybe four I can't remember how many you actually fill in and then there's flower buds and hearts on the trellis and then of course over here that I need to get done part two was released this past Friday the um what is today nine the seventh so May 7th so what my plan is with this is I'm going to finish the green. I hope to finish the green today and weave in the ends of all of those dishcloths. Finish the green. Leave the red until I get to the red. There's some red on part two. So then I'll leave it until I get to the red so that way I only have to pull it out once. So it's not, not having the red sections in part one is not going to affect my starting part two. I can do it without those sections in. So my plan is go ahead and pro finish the green proceed on to part two and fill in those red parts on part one when I get there and that way I can kind of kind of catch up and stay caught up I feel that if I don't do that then I'm just going to get farther and farther behind and I won't be able to catch up so this week we this is what the colors were for oh my gosh they're so messy I'm so sorry um I have threads everywhere so we were using 3776 for the orange, DMC 741 or 471 for the light green, 221 for the red, which I have not put in yet, but I believe that's going to look fantastic um, on my fabric. And then DMC 3345. So those were the four from this week. But then we're adding in the light ecru color, which in the DMC version, it we don't have ecru it's like 771 or something um let's see 712 dmc 712 so it is kind of a light creamy color we're adding that in and we're adding in a brown which i think is the 300 it's kind of a a coppery brown color remind me next week to shut the blind because i think with the blind shut it's perfect lighting in here so so we're adding those two colors in this week. A little bit more of the light green, I mean the orange, I think the light green might be done for the, for the duration. Cause you didn't, according to the pattern, we didn't need very much of that. Okay, and then on to, that was the surprise new start from a couple weeks ago. This is the whip that was done in the wheel spin. It's called Bee Study, B-E-E -E, by Kathy Barrick. And I was getting close to finishing that side of the book cover. I did not get very much progress done, I'm not gonna lie. Um, with the dishcloths and the three cross stitch whips that I had, um, I'm spread pretty thin. So, but I got, I did get some done. I did finish the other wing. I put the word of carried the border all the way across and put in the spine. And as you can tell, I still have a thread hanging here. I started to put my name, which, yeah. Of course, to me in the camera, it looks backwards. So I'm like, oh my gosh, did I stitch it the wrong direction? But no, it's just the way that it shows up on the camera to me. So then there's a little B's up here. And then here in this box, it says the word B. So this will say H for Harmony, which is my first name, and then Terry, which is my last name. 
So I didn't get a ton done. Oh, and I, I did start this um, black checkerboard board or two. So not a ton of progress, but it took me three strands and a lot of counting to get the wing done. So I don't consider this a complete failure. It just doesn't look as like it's as much progress as I usually get on my projects. But like I said, with the three cross stitch and then all of the dishcloths, um, I didn't have a lot of time. Now we're on to, oh my gosh, it's four cross stitch projects with Alice in Wonderland, Bee Study, Pandemic, and then my secret new start from last week. And that's where we're at right now. Oh, I gotta put this away. Sorry. <clears throat> Stray floss. I am very frugal with my floss. So even the one strand that just tried to get away from me, I gotta catch that. Okay, so this is Bigfoot Bunch by Plum Street Sampler, Samplers. And last week when I came visiting with you, I had zero done. Um, and then I cried <laughs> because I got a decent start. I got... Uh, trying to get this to lay flat here so you can see okay so I started the bottom border over here on the right and I took it up and then across and then took it up and that's almost all of the black border and then I started I started on the leaves and I got this one done over here and then I started putting in the grass and I noticed that with the leaves and the flower that you can no longer see because I had to rip them out, I made a boo-boo. I made a mistake. So all of this has to come out. Well, thankfully, the black I can adjust. I did adjust this one, and it actually needs one stitch at the top. And then I have to adjust this one. But I, this, was, this one here was supposed to be 16, and I missed three stitches and only put in 13. So I have to rip it out and start again. And I was a little bit stressed that day. It was Friday afternoon that I found out that I realized it. So it'll be okay. I still have a month. I still, so um, for the leaves, I'm using Pea Pod, which is a really cool variegated green and it goes to like a limey yellow um, to green. So that's really pretty. And that's why I was kind of bummed that I had to rip some of those leaves out because I really liked that the way they, they turned out. And then with the border around them, um, the border is called for Classic Color Works Pine Needles. We talked last week that at my local shop, it was sold out. I could order online, but that wasn't what I was prepared to do. There is a DMC conversion, 730, and I had it in Vintage Animals. Well, I, when I pulled Vintage Animals out, I found that I had already used 730 and it was the other color that um, was almost an exact match that I had to swap out. So I grabbed the other color that I was not going to use and I'm using that as the border, the replacement for pine needles. Um, the 730 is a dark, it's called Dark Olive. Is the I mean, if they have names, it's called Dark Olive. Um, 3011 is the one that I'm using. It's called dark khaki green. So it's a little bit more on the brown. But when you lay them really ne next to each other, it's hard to tell the difference. So I think it goes well with the pine or the pea pod and I'm going to continue on with that. I really did like the persimmon, the classic color works persimmon. Um, of course, it's hard to see because I left the blinds open. But I really like that. Um, and that's, and then I have the hickory sticks, which is the brown. Um, but I haven't started any of that yet because most of the pattern is actually the leaves. So I wanted to get the leaves in and then worry about everything else because I could whip that up really quickly. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Once I get these dishcloths done, hopefully next week, then I will have a lot more free time. But with that being said, there will not be a wheel spin for a new start or a new whip this week. I'm going to continue on with my secret stitch and the um, Alice in Wonderland sale and pandemic. 
And I'm gonna continue on with those three and see if that helps simplify things for me a little bit so that way I don't have to make progress on four items and keep rotating. I'll just stick with these ones. And then once I'm done with the dishcloth and the secret stitch, then we'll continue the wheel spins. I think that will help alleviate some of my stress um, because obviously I was stressed because I cried a teeny tad <laughs> when I realized I had to rip that all out. Um, but it's not as bad, not as bad as what it seemed because I don't have to rip up the black border. It's just that's not as much stitching as that one. I had a big leaf in there I had to take out. So here at the end, we're at Pandemic. Again, this is um, a stitch along that we are doing in the Michigan Cross Stitch Group. We started, some of us were started before and that's fine, but then the others that wanted to participate, um, I almost said cast on, but that's a knitting term. We started on January 1st, 2021. My goal for myself was to get this done in 2021. And I committed heavily because I stitched 2021 in here. Um, I am almost done with a page, a full page, but I know I've stitched more because I did some of the motifs on top, but we'll, we'll see. So <clears throat> I was kind of here at the page break. So I've stitched all of this this week, but I know that I've done some of this up here. I just can't remember what. Um, so this is about three quarters of a page, three quarters of this page. And then once I get that done, I did make it all the way to the corner and got the border in. But once I get this page done, I will be 20% for sure because I will have five complete pages. But then I have all of this because here's like right here at the top of these flowers is the top of the page. Um, so anything really above here, all of that, all the way across, See, all four pages, I've gotten quite a bit done above. So I really, I've kind of been doing some guesstimating that I have like six pages done right now. And then when I finish this one, I'll have maybe six and a half because I'm going to fill as much of this up as I can before I move the frame again. So I'm thinking I'm going to have about six and a half pages equivalent to that done Um when I finish page number six, this is page number 16. And the cool thing is, is I actually am making really good progress because that page, I there was only a small portion, the part that says 20, that was full, almost like full coverage stitching. And then the rest of it is just kind of sparse because it's flowers. So I'm making great progress on this page. Um, I know that there's some heavier stitching pages up on the top. I'm not too worried about that though because I think I can fly through some of the lighter pages. So I know that some of you probably will get bored with seeing it, but I am loving that um, I'm getting such great progress every single week. I got three quarters of a page in like a week. That's like huge. Um, if I can do that every single week, <laughs> then I'll get it done in no time, but I know that things are gonna come up. But I make it my priority. I usually do my eight strands a day in that before I even move on to anything else. I wake up early in the morning, and in the mornings, I don't commute to work. I work from home the morning, the first half of the day, and then the second half of the day, Monday through Thursday, I go to the office. So since I don't have a morning commute, I gain a half an hour. So I'm able to work on it um, before breakfast and then after breakfast all the way up until the time that I have to log into, into the computer. So I'm able, usually I'm able to get all of my eight strands in before that happens. Sometimes I save, I have to save them until the end. Yesterday and this morning, um, both I put some strands into the border because that's really fast. You don't have to count anything. You just go straight up. Um, and that helps when I'm running a little bit behind because you, yeah, yesterday I didn't even get all my strands done. I, like at 2 p.m. I realized I still had four to go. So um, I am done for the day, for today. So um, I think that's it for me today. I don't think I have anything else to chat with you about. Um, but I just want to say happy Mother's Day. I know that it is not a happy day for everyone. I am one of those people. It is one of my most disliked day of the year, but that's a conversation for non-social non, non -social media platforms. Um, 
but I do, for those of you that, that really enjoy Mother's Day, I hope that you have a great day. And if you don't enjoy Mother's Day, um, pray through it. Um, press into the Lord and he will, he will walk beside you because I know he walks beside me when I struggle. I cried a lot at church today. Um, so, but anyways, I don't have anything else to discuss with you this week. I'm sure that I'll probably think of something as soon as I upload this video, but in the meantime, have a fantastic day, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.